Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at Trading180.com and welcome to this week's Supply and Demand Forex and Gold Fundamental and Technical Analysis. If you're a new watcher, a warm welcome to you and if you're returning, an equally warm welcome to you and please don't forget to like, subscribe and share, press that like button if you find the content I provide useful every week um, and liking is a free way to support the channel and really gets it uh, going in the YouTube algorithm. Rhythm. So um, the trading 180 process, uh, slightly different, I guess, to uh, many other uh, trading channels that we employ uh, fundamental analysis really to establish our directional bias, not technical analysis. Technical analysis since our supply and demand strategies are used to really just time our trade entries, identify um, uh, risk management opportunities and establish profit targets and seeing really where uh, value is on a price chart, whether we're buying at a potentially expensive or a bargain area, right? So um, that's the trading 180 way. And uh, let's get into the week ahead. And when it comes to uh, some of the, uh, the news that is going to be going on, a lot of uh, central bank news. So the Fed, uh, US uh, Federal Reserve Bank, the European Central Bank, Bank of England and Bank of Japan, pretty much the major central banks, will be meeting to discuss monetary policy next week. And we're going to get into that in a bit more detail um, with investors eager to hear if policymakers will be updating forward guidance amid concerns over the Omicron variant and mounting inflationary pressures, right? So um, central banks at the moment are in a interest rate hiking cycle. Um, well, uh, some of them are. Um, and um, but they can't uh, necessarily hike because obviously of, of, of high inflation. Um, they can't necessarily hike because they uh, really have to have the, the economy grow as well. And if the Omicron variant is causing lockdowns, then um, hiking becomes a bit more difficult, even in the face of higher inflation. But let's get into that anyways. And we'll start off on the dollar index and the dollar index is a measure of dollar strength against the major currencies like the euro the yen uh, the pound as well so um, looking at this really kind of starting off fundamentally and giving again an, a bit of an overview and we'll start off more on the risk sentiment before we get into kind of the dollar um, fundamentals and uh, you know two weeks into the Omicron outbreak and where are we um, uh, where to from here I should say so the pathogen the main I guess takeaways is the pathogen is spreading fast but seems to cause only a mild disease which is you know really important and the Omicron variant um, efficacy low Lower, but boosters uh, appear to help so there is some positive news out of um, you know with regards to the Omicron variant it's not necessarily as bad um, as uh, first thought even though things could obviously deteriorate from here nobody truly knows but the positive there are positive signs right so the reason why that's important is because then uh, countries are probably less likely to go into any kind of severe lockdown which may hurt you know economic growth and um uh, we can potentially get, um, you know, move forward and economies can kind of get to growth um, if they can contain the Omicron variant. And there is obviously another, um, and I say obviously, but there is uh, another um, uh, Bloomberg article, uh, Pfizer uh, course has 23% efficacy versus Omicron in South Africa study. So um, immunity is still likely strong enough to curb severe disease. So I'll just scroll down to the bottom as well. And it says preliminary UK data released on Friday showed that boosters from AstraZeneca PLC and Pfizer uh, BioNTech SE improved protection against the Omicron vari variant uh, to as much as 75% in the early days after the shot. So again, just uh, some positive um, news really uh, from a risk sentiment perspective looking at the uh, the fundamentals and really fundamental analysis is really to do with the study um, or fundamental analysis when it comes to forex anyway is uh, the study of what what gives that uh, uh, forex exchange rate its value right and um, uh, the things that we focus on at trading 180 is is um, a central bank monetary policy which is driven by uh, in, um, which is driven by inflation and GDP and ultimately what we were looking for to give a currency its value is um, central banks 
um, again, monetary policy and the currencies, are, I guess the banks that are looking to hike rates first, yeah, um, and looking to appreciate their currency are really the ones that we look to buy versus the currencies that are not doing the same or basically lagging. So for 2021 to 2023, end of 2023, fourth quarter, if we, if we look at the Federal Reserve, the, uh, ING Bank, Dutch Bank think that tapering obviously um, uh, is, is coming tapering ends in the second quarter of uh, 2022 with the first rate hike potentially coming in the third and fourth quarters right so you compare that to for example the central uh, European Central Bank they're not looking to potentially uh, hike rates or the ING Bank don't think they're going to hike rates until the first quarter of 2023 if all obviously goes according to plan but the the, the countries and the currencies that are, are, are thought to hike first uh, should be the ones to potentially buy. Now, there also, there's obviously caveats to this, meaning that things can change, right? Things do change, things can change. And we'll get into, for example, the Bank of England um, as well a bit later. But as a rule of thumb, you really want to look towards banks that are hiking rates first against central banks that are looking to hold or even cut rates. So moving on to the, uh, the dollar and um, actually, matter of fact, sorry, this is a, a, an article where we talk about 20 uh, central banks hold meetings as inflation forces split. And again, it's just uh, understanding that there's lots of um, uh, central bank meetings, the Fed, the Bank of England, the ECB and the Bank of Japan, as we've uh, seen, uh, are looking to potentially tighten, um, not all of them, obviously there are different um, uh, uh, paths at the moment, but in general, um, inflation is a worry, right? So the Fed is expected to taper support while others are still easing. Again, there's that divergence in the Bank of England hiking hints undermined by Omicron. And the reason why is because, and we'll get into it, is uh, we had the latest GDP data from the, from, from the UK, which wasn't great. And as I say, in order to hike rates, you need the economy to be able to support a rate hike. Anyways, Fed is seen on track to quicken taper after latest inflation print. So tapering is again the first stages of uh, appreciating a currency um, and, and not depreciating uh, the currency. Um, so they're look, not looking to buy government bonds, they're looking to reduce the amount of government bonds they, uh, they buy. Um, and which is again positive and uh, if they're tapering quicker then that should mean a positive uh, move I'm not saying it's going to happen this week no one knows exactly when it's going to happen but in the medium to long term this is the the, the path right so understanding this and going back to the uh, dollar index we should see you know the path of least resistance to the upside right that's what should happen now I'm not saying again I'm not saying that it's going to go this week it's going to go higher it's not how you know uh, prices work right there's 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 liquidity that needs to be gathered and um, there's profit taking towards the end of the year because this is probably the last or this is the last week of uh, trading really major trading uh, by the institutions and uh, everything else after this week is going to be really quiet so um, although maybe in the next few months prices may you know the, the 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 value of the dollar may go higher in the next may, <coughs> sorry maybe week or two we could see you know profit taking prices come down to an area of value right where uh, that is seen more of as a bargain to buy the dollar than say somewhere like now right so um so again my path for least resistance or my uh, my bias is to the uh, to a dollar long trade still um, and uh, just waiting for really prices to come down uh, to certain areas before looking to get obviously uh, uh, long on um, not necessarily the dollar index but other dollar uh, uh, crosses so um, again if anything changes again we use this as really just confluence um, and understanding from the, from evaluation of a dollar this is definitely an expensive area for now this is seen as a bit of a bargain area because you can see there's buyers there so um for now i think the dollar is in a bit of a no man's land and let's see what happens in the you know the coming week or coming weeks if there's really no movement uh this week and there's probably going to be no surprises as the news has been priced in um i think uh, not a prediction but i would assume that 
probably some profit taking on the dollar will occur um, until into the next year and we could see the dollar start to pull back and then into a, into a nice zone, a nice price, maybe the 95s, um, even better would be the 90, yeah, 95 round number and then at the start of the year we could see some more dollar buying. And again, this is all dependent upon uh, the economy um, and the Omicron variant and how bad or how good it, um, it is. Uh, so moving on to the dollar yen and the dollar yen uh this area here uh this uh 11260 area has held right from this demand zone here and um again uh i would expect prices to you know go higher but again in the short term nobody knows right no one knows what's going to happen uh day to day or even week to week but you would think in the next few months with you know the uh the fact that you've got um, the Japanese yen and the Bank of Japan are, are really not looking to hike rates anytime soon. They're well behind the curve. Um, you would think that prices are going, you know, to go, or the exchange rate is going to go to the upside. But again, if risk off, right, if risk off prevails, meaning that there's more uncertainty and doubt, the Japanese yen is a safe haven currency or tends to react to safe haven currency. And you could see prices actually go to the downside but risk is uh, when once risk comes back on and once you know vaccines start to um, work against the Omicron variant because that, that's, that, that is the light at the end of the tunnel right we are you know the, the, the Pfizer's and the pharmaceuticals of the world are looking to um, you know create a vaccine that helps against that then you will see uh, prices eventually uh, you know go to the upside. So again, um, my bias is to the upside, but just uh, looking at, you know, really kind of levels to see uh, where where we want to go from there. Um, so any kind of buy trades in this, you know, 112 or even the 111s would be even better for me. Um, that's what I'm looking at. Moving on to the dollar Swiss, dollar Swiss again, um, we did have in fact a nice little, uh, some demand here. So we've definitely found uh, buying activity uh, in around here so uh, this uh, 9160 to 92 area so if prices do start to come back down into that area there I think that's a nice buy and a decent buy as well not necessarily convinced on this level because it has been touched once twice uh, three times um, so I think if I was looking to get long on this, it would have to be definitely at that 0.91 round number. That area there also represents a bit of a, a capture pain relief zone. So on an intraday chart, so that I think that's quite nice if prices do come down there for a nice little bargain. And again, if you're looking at looking to sell this currency pair in a risk off environment, if things start to get worse for now, I think that the, the top area of this area would obviously be a uh, <clears throat> bit of a, a supply zone, not the strongest area of supply, not yet, not by our criteria, because it really hasn't made lower highs and lower lows yet. But there is some supply, I guess, on the uh, would be supply on the uh, on the lower time frames. But from a daily perspective, it's not really the strongest area of supply at the moment. Uh, moving on to the dollar CAD and the uh, Canadian dollar uh, this week, um, as risk came back on. Um, the commodity currencies, uh, the Canadian dollar did start to strengthen oil, you know, uh, uh, went higher in price a bit. And um, but from fundamentally, this pair isn't something that I'm really interested in. Uh, but it did create, in fact, um, a decent uh, supplies and surprise. So prices basically came up to this, uh, literally pinged off of that uh, one. 0.8 sorry 284 level and uh, reverse from there and then we have created another uh, supply zone right there so in fact this is now seen as a bit of an expensive area or a bargain area depending on which one you want to be a buyer and seller of in a risk on environment personally you probably want to look for, towards a Canadian dollar as they are looking to hike rates first so if all things are you know start to become good then that is a decent area my only concern would be the fact that the level has been touched several times so I'm not really too keen on that technically not the best area technically to look for um, to look for short trades but again it depends on which way you want to be a buyer or seller as we've seen uh, this week prices did pretty much react or kind of held on between these demand zones right there and right there i will get rid of this one 
right here and uh, again I would probably say any pullbacks into this zone if you want to be a buyer of the US dollar then that is where you're looking for the one two six round numbers where you're looking for any kind of um, uh, buy trades but for me um, it's not really a pair I'm interested in at the moment uh, pound dollar and the pound dollar um, the pound should be really the one that maybe would be strengthening um, when it comes to monetary policy as they are looking to potentially high rates first. Uh, but we did have this week, uh, the UK economy uh, barely grew in October, uh, the third quarter, as shortages hit builders, so construction declines uh, from September and manufacturing stalled and outlook for the end of the quarter bleaker with new COVID restrictions. So um, the the economy uh, is losing a bit of momentum at the moment. And so that puts really you know a bit of pressure on the Bank of England because if, even though the Bank of England are looking to potentially hike rates next week, um, the market is pretty much saying that they don't believe that they will. And to hike, especially during during the Christmas period, is uh, isn't something that is really advised. I think it's it's uh, they've only, the Bank of England have only hiked rates once in the past maybe forty years or something like that. Anyway, um, so I don't think that's really going to be happening anytime soon. But in also as well in a bit of a risk off environment, you've got um, the, the the dollar should be the one to actually uh, strengthen. So that I think is a decent zone, especially because it's got uh, it's got uh, some a bit of support and resistance within that zone there as well. So that looks uh, that looks very uh, good technically i think um lots of lots of confluence in that zone and i think if i was to be a buyer or, or a seller of this currency pair again my my uh, uh, uh bias would be to to the short side so any pullbacks into i think this area here this 1337 to 1332 um is a decent uh sell we do have some other supply zones in there the 133 round number let me just zoom out a little bit. Yeah, I think there's localized uh, um, supply there, but I think overall, let me just get rid of some of these. Make the chart a bit messy. But I do think uh, we've got yeah a decent zone around that 1335 area. Moving on to the euro dollar and the euro dollar, um, we've now again entered into a bit of a range, probably towards the end of the year, um, where prices are kind of between this high and this low, right? Um, prices go from trending to ranging. Um, and uh, I guess the, uh, the correct term for it is really just a, a, a an auction right a fair auction where you've got buyers and sellers this is obviously um, an expensive area or a bargain area depending on which way you're looking at it and this is obviously the same thing bargain area for the euro or an expensive area for the dollar right so um, again at the moment I think with profit taking going on um, will we see much movement this week who knows unless there's probably any surprises but everything's pretty much been factored in i think or priced in uh, to the market so i can't see really any major moves uh, this week but again who knows right i'm not here to necessarily predict what price is going to do in the short term but um i know probably from a definitely from a long-term perspective you know any pullbacks for me any pullbacks are a shorting opportunities so if prices you know come up to this uh, this area of this uh, um, supply zone or even better still this supply zone here for me i am a shorter reason being is because again the fed not only are ahead of the ecb uh, from a um from a monetary policy perspective um even from a, a risk perspective in omicron um europe are struggling more than I think the US are. And uh, the ECB stimulus exit plan emerges with inflation at record pace. But again, um, there's, in, there's inflation is at record pace pretty much everywhere. Um, so nothing new, but economists see an end to bond buying in 2023, according to a poll and officials expect to boost regular uh, purchases in the short term. Now, uh, economists see an end to bond buying in 2023 in uh with the fed they're expecting that to be this year right i'll say i should say this year or shortly next year in 2022 so again the um by all measures the us are ahead of the um of, of europe um uh, so so from that perspective if we're looking at the charts you would still consider 
um, prices going down to at least the one tens, and uh, I've seen some uh, central some some bank forecasts that actually predict uh, the one ten. Right, so that could be a potential target within the next uh, quarter or two. So any again, any pullbacks into uh, some supply zones for me are shorting opportunities. Although I probably won't be trading anything. Um, uh, or opening up any new positions over the uh, Christmas period after this week. I think that's pretty much going to be me done for the year uh, after this week. I'm not going to enter into any new positions um, until probably 2022. So um, there are obviously buying opportunities if, if you know things start to turn around for Europe or things start to deteriorate in the US, then this uh, 112 uh, round number this zone should be a decent area to look for any kind of buy trades. Moving on to the Aussie dollar, and the Aussie dollar again benefited from some risk on sentiment uh, this week, and again, nice bounced off of that demand zone right there, really, really accurate. Um, and then we've kind of again halted here or paused here uh, for a little bit um, in this supply zone. So let's see what happens. Again, I think probably towards the uh, the end of the year we should probably maybe start to potentially range um, before the market decides on what it really wants to do the Australian dollar are again behind the curve the RBA are not looking to high rates anytime soon although there are rumors of them potentially looking to implement some sort of um, uh, tapering within the next uh, at the next meeting so um, who knows but uh, for now I think again uh, uh, with the uh, US dollar being ahead of the Australian dollar in terms of monetary policy, any moves back to these demands, sorry, these supply zones should be uh, shorting opportunities. But um, in a risk on environment, I think the, uh, the Australian dollar has a lot more room to grow to the upside. But I think while we're still in this uncertain uh, point, uh, and until the RBA do start to uh, announce some sort of tapering and, and rate hikes, I think uh, the, uh, the the US dollar is the one to buy. And moving on to gold, finally, gold uh, has been a bit of a surprise, really, when it, when it comes to <clears throat> uh, price movement. Uh, you know, the uncertainty around the Omicron variant, and as well as, you know, high inflation, I, I would have assumed that gold would have you know, been uh, making its moves higher, but um, it hasn't really reacted, in fact. So again, I say reacted, but it's gone into, I guess, uh, what the markets think are a bit of a fair value auction. So uh, obviously the uh, the market thinks that over the last uh, week or two, that the uh, gold is valued between um, 1762 and 1790. So um, here we are still buying opportunities, obviously, but not necessarily being driven um, to price discovery. So uh, again, this area here, uh, this one seven six area, is a level that has been touched, you know, several times. So be very very careful if prices do come down, because probably expect something like that to happen. Um, with the dollar, again, I think probably being um, the stronger um, and the expectation for uh, rate hikes. And I guess rate hikes would give a return, right? If if the dollar is returning, going from maybe 0.25% to potentially 0. Point, um, you know, 5%, depending on how you know the hike as a as a percentage, um, then you'll probably have um, you'll probably uh, uh, have money flowing into. Uh, the dollar and potentially out of gold because gold doesn't pay really an interest rate right and uh, you know into government bonds as well and in potential yields but um, again it's a bit of a difficult one to, to tell at the moment again I would have expected gold to at least have uh, had a reaction um, to uh, to the inflation um, as well as uh, the Omicron variant but if you are looking to buy gold uh, I think probably a fresher area of demand the one seven uh, 50s would be the probably the better area of course I would say the ultimate cheap area at the moment if you're looking at this being an absolute high and an absolute low would be the of the range would be definitely around these 1680s would be the really the one and if we are taking that <clears throat> that low to that high and you're looking at fair value potentially uh, where we're we at All right fair value gold is probably just below fair value so if you and if you think that gold is cheap then um, yeah, we are definitely below that fair value 
um, area. So anything uh, below 50% of the range, if that's expensive and that's cheap, that's a bargain. This is fair value. So anything around, anything that goes below that is gonna be seen as more of a bargain area. But um, I think uh, um, for now, gold is in probably going to maintain its um, uh, its its area around here. I think again, between probably this, this 1815s and probably this uh, uh, 1761, probably for now, um, I guess, unless uh, things either get better or worse, right? There's got to be a catalyst for price movement, but for now, uh, it doesn't seem like there is. Anyways, uh, especially because as we come towards the end of the year, but again, just a quick word of warning that once um, liquidity does dry up a little bit, the market is easier to push. Prices are easier to push in certain directions and the market will seek out your stop losses. So, um, you know, not say, not any kind of financial advice, but just be aware of any, you know, major swings or any major manipulations in the market, um, um, you know, on, on low, um, low liquidity uh, trading over the Christmas period after this week. Anyways, guys, that's it. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the, uh, the analysis. Take care and speak to you all soon.